Well, I'm sure you have heard over the past few months when someone brings up gender theory or global warming or climate change, they beat you over the head with science if you ask any questions, if you seem critical of their analysis. You're a science denier or a climate denier. You just don't like science. Well, following the release of the memo, the anti-diversity memo, now a few articles have been coming out, and I have two to take a look at, that are saying, well, we need to stop listening to science because those pesky biological differences that you pointed out, it's problematic. So stop equating science with truth. Evolutionary psychology is just the most obvious example of science's flaws, written by Slate, someone named Chanda Prescott Weinstein. <laughs> it's 2017. It's, it's 2017, and people are still debating whether or not women are intellectually inferior to men. That isn't what was said in the memo. And whether we are entitled to a workplace that isn't toxic to people simply based on their gender and sex. The Google employee memo about the apparent harms of diversity policies in Silicon Valley is both shocking is both a shocking news story for the general public and for many women and gender minorities, gender minorities, especially of color, working in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and medicine, a banal sign of normalcy. This is a uh, strap in, folks. This is going to be a moronic ride. At least science is helping us make progress, right? Science is sold to us as an almost holy, objective pursuit, a pure endeavor, a way of pursuing truth and only truth. As a high school senior planning to study physics and astronomy in college, I was thoroughly convinced that solving quantum gravity would trickle down to improve human relations. Of course, I was adorably naive about both the difficulty that quantum gravity presented us, we've made little progress in the 18 years since I started university, and about the relationship between science and humanity's various imperfections. My education as a scientist did little to disabuse me of the simple view of science as a great unifier, as an objective means of distilling information. When skeptical members of my family argued that physics was dangerous because of nuclear weapons. I pointed out that it wasn't science, and that was the problem, but rather how people used it. But nowhere is it more evident that this perspective is flawed than when we consider the uses and abuses of evolutionary biology and its sibling evolutionary psychology. It's abusive, right? It is impossible to consider this field of science without grappling with the flaws of the institution and of the deification of science itself. For example, it was argued to me this week that the Google memo failed to constitute hostile behavior because it cited peer-reviewed articles that suggest women have different brains. I don't think that's exactly what... Anyway, the well-known scientist who made this comment to me is both a woman and someone who knows quite well that the peer-reviewed and correct are not interchangeable terms. This brings us to the question that many have grappled with this week. It's 2017, it says it again. It, it reemphasizes, it reiterates. And to some extent, scientific literature still supports a patriarchal view that ranks a man's intellect above a woman's. I don't know, that's about as much as of this mindless BS as I can handle on Slate.com. So the argument was that women are different, therefore they choose to pursue different careers, right? It pointed out essentially the main differences between men and women. The idea that it was anti-woman is outrageous at best and a full-on lie at worst. So moving on, Gizmodo, and this is from Tuesday, so this is from a few days ago, men have always used science to explain why they're better than women. It's almost like these people get together and coordinate the release of their articles in order to have more impact. If I didn't know better. On Saturday, Gizmodo published a 10-page long screed written by Google software engineer James DeMore, blasting the company's diversity policies. In the new viral document entitled Google's Ideological Echo Chamber, DeMore assists, or excuse me, asserts 
that women are biologically ill-equipped to handle the rigors of the tech industry. The encouraging news is that Demore has now been fired from Google, according to multiple news reports. Sadly, the ideas espoused in this letter echo the same pseudoscience peddled by eugenicists and white supremacists for decades, and they're unlikely to disappear anytime soon. So, that's right. Crazy white people came up with all of this. You people are bigots. Many ideas embraced by this ex-employee, Google employee, are based largely on the so-called conclusions of evolutionary psychology, a field premised on the idea that our psychological traits are the product of the same natural selection that shaped early human evolution. In practice, evolutionary psychology has been used to justify everything from rape to claims that certain groups of people are inherently more intelligent than others. It has been, also been criticized for shoddy methodology, ignoring cultural context, and leaping to conclusions on inadequate evidence. Evolutionary psychologists have tried to use their science to determine the best way to seduce women, which they think can be <laughs> can be gamed out of, like, Battleship. I think he means Battleship, Battlestar. No, no, he doesn't mean Battleship. Anyway, I think this is, uh, this is the line that struck me and the whole reason I ended up doing this video is I was kind of speed reading through these articles. Sadly, the ideas espoused in his letter echo the same pseudoscience peddled by eugenicists and white supremacists for decades, and they're unlikely, unlikely to, to, to <laughs> It's six and a half minutes into this video. Okay, I'm going to get tongue-tied once. I'm just going to have to live with it. Ah, they're unlikely to disappear anytime soon. So that was the line that made me go, okay, I should probably share this with you guys because this is uh, outrageous. Remember just a few months ago, they were beating us over the head with being science deniers if you didn't believe everything they, they claim. And I'm not even saying there isn't climate change. I do believe there is a discussion to be had there, but these people who are pro-climate change try to shut down debates and they try to use emotion to fight instead of logic or facts and they pretend to know more than they really do and that's why i'm always skeptical and i think why a lot of people are skeptical of the things that they say so i'm going to go ahead and end this video there let me know what your thoughts are on these two groundbreakingly stupid articles i'd like to hear what you think and uh, i will be streaming later tonight so at about 12 30 a.m pacific time so it'll be about I don't know, eight hours from now? Ten hours from now, just about. So if you're interested, I'll, that's what I'll be doing tonight. And hit me up on Twitter if you guys have anything you'd like to tell me directly. So that'll be it. I'll see you all later.